Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the public lecture, especially in this difficult time when most of us are working or studying from home. I'm Xiaoming Yuan, the head of the math department of Hong Kong U. Uh, today is the very first lecture of the science public lecture series organized by the Faculty of Science of Hong Kong U uh, in this semester. Uh, before the start of today's presentation, let me briefly introduce our speaker, Dr. Tabin Chin. Uh, Dr. Chin is currently an assistant lecturer of the Department of Math of Hong Kong U, and his teaching areas include being out from multivariable calculus, mathematical analysis, etc. And his major research interest is number theory. Uh, Dr. Chin is outstanding in both ac academic and the teaching. Uh, way back when he was still in his secondary school studies at SU, he was already representing Hong Kong to compete globally. For example, he successfully won three gold medals in the International Mathematics Olympiad for three years in a row. Do you know anybody else who has this achievement or are comparable? Well, with his excellence in mathematics, he has also been appointed as a trainer for mathematics programs of the Hong Kong Academy of Gifted Education since 2011. Uh, Dr. Ching has received his Bachelor of Science with first class honors, of course, and a PhD in math, both from my department at Hong Kong U. And during his undergraduate, undergraduate and the postgraduate studies, he has been awarded countless scholarships and prizes, including the Excellence Teaching Award for twice. So now Dr. Chen is going to deliver an exciting talk on mathematics in games. Some of you may not realize how mathematical knowledge and thinking could be related to us. But actually, they are hidden everywhere in our lives, okay, including entertainment like games today. Dr. Chen is going to surprise you, I'm sure, by revealing how knowledge in mathematics can help us increase the chance of winning in games. So, without further ado, let us welcome Dr. Chen. Hey, thank you, Professor Yun. And also, good evening to everyone. So, let me share my screen first. Okay, so I hope uh, everyone is doing well in this uh, tough period. So this is my first time to deliver this public lecture in the Hong Kong U. So this is uh, the science public lecture series. So I think uh, one purpose of having this series is to promote science to the general public. So I come from the Department of Mathematics, so definitely I will say something related to mathematics. So you can see that uh, the topics is mathematics and games, which means that I will mainly talk about some games so that I can uh, tell you how to apply some kind of basic mathematical knowledge when playing such games. So if I ask the question, uh, what is mathematics? Then I believe that uh, many people will say that uh, mathematics is related to numbers. So starting from the very early stage, uh, you already learn how to count some numbers using these uh, very simple numbers to count something. And then some may say that uh, mathematics is also related to some computations. You also learn this kind of very basic arithmetic operations since primary schools or even earlier. So those are some basic operations in mathematics that you may, you may need to do in every day. And some may say uh, some more advanced thing, maybe you need to represent some numbers using fractions, maybe some decimal numbers, or using a percentage to represent some numbers as well. But uh, that is, uh, that means uh, many people would mean that um, mathematics is more about this kind of numbers or computations, etc. Uh, so they may not know uh, what, are really math what mathematicians are really doing. So which means that um, most people uh, only need some very basic mathematical knowledge in order to solve some questions in daily life. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, mathematics is actually a very useful discipline. Uh, you may have heard that actually uh, mathematics is usually regarded as one of the most important subjects in science, because there are many applications in different subjects that uh, involve some mathematics or some kind of mathematical ideas. Uh, just like uh, some, uh, even some daily life things, uh, like uh, when you're living in some buildings, uh, of course, uh, you won't care how the buildings are built up, but then uh, in fact, uh, there are many mathematical formula behind these kind of things uh, in order to ensure that uh, all the buildings are safe enough to, for you to live in or maybe something that is more closely related to everyone. Uh, so every day when you use your smartphone or you use the laptop, 
Uh, so of course, uh, there are many, uh, apart from the technology, there are many things involved about these kind of things that is also uh, involved mathematics. Uh, so you need a lot of uh, mathematical knowledge in order that uh, this thing will work. But once again, uh, normal people don't really need to understand how they function. They only need to know uh, how to use these things in their daily life. So in this talk, I'm not going to go deeply into some kind of uh, advanced things or some technical things like this. So I still want to stick to this uh, basic knowledge in mathematics. So I want to show that uh, even with this uh, very basic understanding or some uh, concepts in mathematics, it can still somehow um, allow us to work on a better way when, when we are doing something uh, like uh, playing games, uh, this kind of entertainment. So maybe I first start with uh, talking about some kind of uh, leisure games. Uh, I mean, uh, just like many of you, I also play a lot of uh, mobile games. Uh, so this is uh, one, one kind of situations that I, I come across when I play such kind of games. Uh, so the, this is one kind of fighting game. Uh, so you can see uh, there is a certain weapon like this. Uh, so of course, uh, when you play a game, you want to perform better. So you want to upgrade your pet weapon in, in some ways uh, so as to become stronger. So this gives you a certain uh, weapon so that uh, its level is zero. Uh, so the number here denotes its level. So how do you upgrade your weapon? Uh, so I find that uh, there is a very common rule in nowadays games. So the rule is that uh, you can actually collect uh, three weapons of the same kind, and then you can combine them to upgrade this. Let's say here we have three copies of some level zero weapon. So I can click the upgrade button here, and then I combine them to get a level one weapon. If you want to further upgrade this thing, then of course uh, you can get another three copies of uh, this level one weapon. Once again, combining them, you get a level two weapon. Uh, so that's something that is uh, quite a common rule uh, when you want to upgrade something. So the situation is like this. Uh, so on the first day when I play this game, I get uh, 40 copies of this um, most basic level, uh, the, the level zero weapon. Then I can try to combine these weapons uh, in the following way, according to the rule to upgrade my weapons. Uh, so for some level one weapons, I can further combine them to get some level two weapon. And then I can further uh, group three of them to get a level three weapon like that. So on the second day, maybe I play the game uh, by putting more effort. So this time I get uh, 50 weapons in total on one day. So what I get would be uh, 51 copies of the level zero weapon like that. Once again, I follow the rule to upgrade this weapon step by step. So I enjoy these kind of things uh, very much. And eventually I get a level four weapon after the second day. Okay, so the question is like this. Uh, suppose that the top level of this weapon is a level 10. So the question that I want to ask is, um, when do, do I get, get the top level weapon? So if you don't have the correct mathematical knowledge, you may think that it is quite easy for me to get the top level weapon according to this rule. Because every time I only need to combine a very few amount of weapons together to upgrade it. And then on the second day, I already get a level four. And then the top level is only level 10. So it seems that it's almost half the way, which means that maybe after one or two weeks, I can already get the top level and then uh, gets the strongest power in this game. But uh, that's actually not the truth. Uh, so if you don't have this knowledge, maybe you need to spend two weeks in order to figure out that actually this seems to be an impossible mission. But uh, if you have the correct uh, mathematical knowledge, actually you can figure this out as the very beginning by uh, using some kind of mathematical arguments to, to compute this. Uh, so here, let me show some more details related to the math behind. So recall that uh, to combine some level zero weapons to get level one, you need uh, three copies in total. And then if you want to get uh, some level two weapons, the number of level zero weapons you need would be three times three. So the three for the, because you need three copies to make up a level one weapon, but then you need three copies of level one to get level two. So you need to take the products of this to get the answer. So sometimes we use the notation free square to mean this product. In the same way, uh, you can actually compute exactly how many uh, level zero weapons do you need in order to get the top level weapon. So using the same rationale, uh, the answer is actually the product of 10 copies of free. So using another notation is free to the power 10. 
So here, even though it only involves the multiplication of very small numbers, it turns out that the answer here is very large. If you have the calculator, actually, you can compute this explicitly. So you actually get a number which is over 59,000. So that's a very large number. Recall that every day I can only get around 50 weapons on average. So if you want to know how many days do I need to get such a level 10 weapon, you can do a simple division like that. The number here divided by 50 will give you an estimation on the number of days that you need to spend on this game, which means I need uh, almost three years in order to get the top level. I quite believe uh, nowadays uh, normal people won't spend uh, three years in playing a game. That's why I say uh, this mission is uh, quite impossible. Uh, so the only way that uh, you can get such a top level weapon is perhaps to step, spend more money and then uh, you can buy more weapons for free. But uh, that's uh, the, some mathematical knowledge behind. Uh, so if you have this kind of a knowledge, you will actually realize this uh, as the very beginning, once you know the rule of this game. And you'll realize that um, this game may not be too easy to play because uh, you need to spend a lot of effort in getting the top level uh, um, power. And for this kind of numbers, uh, we usually call this some uh, exponential function. I think you, have, you also heard of this terminology uh, very often nowadays, like the, the um, very hit topic nowadays, the COVID-19. You know that uh, the number of infection every day uh, actually grows in an exponential manner. Uh, the meaning of this statement is that actually the, the number of is uh, more or less double or tripled after maybe two or three days. Uh, we usually call this the exponential growth. Well, the idea means that uh, actually this growth of the function is actually a, uh, growing in a very fast manner. So you can see that even if I just take the product of some small numbers for a few times, I already get a very large number like that. So remember that whenever you see situations like this, actually the numbers actually grow in a very fast manner. Now imagine that if next time the company changed the top level to level 12, then you actually need nine times than this number in order to get the top level of the weapon. So that's some knowledge you can apply in order to figure out this kind of a scenario. Okay, another side question that you may also ask, also related to the same game. So previously, I want to get the top level weapon only. You may also want to get a full collection of all these weapons. For some reason, you may want to get a full collection of that. Then uh, you may want to count how many weapons you will need in total. So of course, uh, under the same rationale, the answer should be the sum of all these terms, because uh, getting a level K weapon require three to the power K uh, uh, weapons in total of level zero. So you just compute the sum of all these terms, you will get the total number of weapons you need here. And again, if you don't have much knowledge about the computing this sum, then you may just do it step by step. You need to take a sum for 10 times in order to compute the final answer. But uh, with some more knowledge in mathematics, uh, you can actually do it in a much simpler way. So this is actually related to the concept of uh, computing the sum of geometric sequence. So this thing is called a geometric sequence, meaning that uh, every time you multiply the number by the same constant. So here is, a, uh, is an idea for you to compute such a sum, which is also well known in this topic. So maybe some of you also know this. Now, for those who uh, do not know this, uh, here is the trick. I uh, let this sum to be S. The trick is to multiply both sides by the common ratio 3. So when I multiply both sides by 3, on the right-hand side, you get a 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 gives you 3 square, etc. So the last term multiplied to 3 gives you the last term like that. So after doing this, you may notice that the new sum here is very similar to the original one. The two expressions only differ by each other from the first term and also the last term. So when you take the difference of these two quantities, so you can actually cancel out all the intermediate terms here. And what remains would be the three to the power 11 minus one. And of course the left-hand side gives you two times of the S. And recall that I want to compute the value of S. So this already tells us a very neat formula for this sum. We don't need to compute the sum for 10 times. 
So I only need to compute this power using calculator and some simple arithmetic. And eventually I get the answer like that. And this uh, can be generalized to give you the so-called formula for this sum of geometric sequence. And if you have some knowledge about this, uh, you can also see that uh, this number is actually dominated by the last term. So we call that a uh, three to the power 10 is already 59,000. So in some sense, uh, that means if you only want to know the approximation to this sum, it suffices for you to know what is the last term or maybe the last two terms. Uh, they already give you a very good hint on the size of the total sum here. Uh, very often, you may not really want to guess the exact value. Uh, then you can use, use this kind of uh, concept to understand uh, how large the number here is without doing some explicit computations. So those are some situations that uh, you can try to apply some knowledge in math. Okay, another situation is like that. Now also a kind of game that I normally play. Uh, it's also about a fighting game. So uh, the situation is that uh, you very often you want to use your limited resources in exchange for some attack power. Of course, your goal is to maximize your attack power under some rules. Uh, so here I'm not going to go through all details because uh, they are too complicated. Uh, so I just briefly mentioned the, the picture of these kind of games. For example, you have some resources like some coins here. So there are many ways for you to spend your coins in exchange for some weapons to get some attack power. And you can buy some sword or combine some resources to get another ass. Or you can also buy some kind of uh, special powers. So that the special powers can only be bought once. So after buying these special powers, you can upgrade all the weapons in a certain way so that uh, their attack powers become uh, a certain multiple of the original attack powers. So many questions or many games can actually be re rephrased in terms of this kind of things. You have some resources and some options to spend your resources, and then you want to figure out how to spend these coins in order to get the maximal possible attack power. Usually we call these kind of things the optimization problems. And that means to get the maximum value or uh, the minimum values of some expressions under some conditions or some rules. Uh, for example, you may try to provide some plans in order to play the game. Like maybe you can use the swaps in order to play this game. Or you can just buy the second uh, superpower and then with the corresponding weapon here. Uh, you may also uh, get a mixture of these um, uh, by buying different kinds of weapons and the special powers. So in different plans, uh, under different plans, you can actually compute the attack power that you can obtain according to these rules. And then you try to figure out uh, which plan is the best. Then you can follow that strategy in order to play this game. And definitely you can see that uh, there must be a lot of mathematical arguments inside here. In particular, it also involves some basic computations, some comparison of the numbers. Uh, this only involves some uh, really basic mathematical knowledge that uh, most people should understand. And maybe I can just uh, say a little bit thing about um, some uh, mathematical way to think of a situation like that, uh, rather than uh, going into the details of computations. So um, very often the situations in reality is much more complicated than this. You may have uh, even more weapons and more options to spend your coins. Yeah, one idea that you can try to apply is to simplify your question. This is also a trick that is uh, commonly used by some uh, mathematics people. Now we try to simplify the question in some ways so as to um, easily understand uh, how the question is about. For example, here I say that in order to get such a, uh, such a weapon here, which is a stronger weapon, uh, you need to combine uh, 200 coins together with two copies of swords. Uh, so according to this rule, it actually is a bit complicated, but I would say that uh, it is actually not too necessary for you to do so. Actually, uh, you can just replace these swords by the corresponding coins here, and then interpret this as uh, spending 400 coins in by the, the weapon here. So if you analyze the question in this way, uh, you can basically um, separate the two options. It suffices for you to study whether the first weapon is better or the second weapon is better uh, for the purpose in getting the uh, higher attack power. 
So in the following, I just assume that I already buy the superpowers here because um, they are quite cheap and then the effects is very strong. Uh, so I mean, just assume that I already buy this power and see uh, which weapon is uh, better. For the first one, I can spend 100 coins to exchange for an attack power of two. And then for the second case, I can spend 400 coins at sec to buy this weapon with an attack power of nine yeah, under the double superpower here. So you can see that uh, you just need a very simple comparison, which is some inequalities here. So this uh, you spend four times of the materials, and then the effects is uh, more than four times, which means that actually the second weapon actually works much better. Uh, so you can use this kind of arguments, uh, which involve some mathematics, to find out that actually um, in the long run, you should actually just buy the second double power here, and also the second weapon, in order to become stronger. You don't really need the option one and option three. So sometimes uh, that's how you can apply some kind of uh, mathematical idea, so as to simplify a question and also to and also to get a better picture on the situation. So this is uh, another kind of situation that means some optimization problem that uh, you may need to apply some kind of mathematical knowledge. Okay, so far in the two examples that I mentioned, uh, both of them involve mainly about some computations. They are just some numbers and computations. So in the next uh, example here, I want to show you something really different. So this time in the game here, it doesn't involve any numbers at all. So rather than that, uh, it is actually in, uh, re related to geometry. So geometry is another topic in mathematics. And then I think many students also learn this in high school as well. So here I want to show you how uh, you can apply some geometric knowledge in playing a game like this, which is called a bouncing ball games. So the situation is like that. We have a certain board like that with four boundaries, and then I have one or more balls like that. I can shoot the balls in a certain direction. For example, if I shoot the ball along a direction like this, then uh, the ball will move according to this path. So once again, I will actually move along a certain six line path until it's missed the boundary. So every time when it's, uh, it's get, when it's missed the boundary, it is bounced off uh, according to the law of reflection. So technically it means that the angle of uh, reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. But I believe that um, normal people also understand how reflection occurs uh, when it's missed a certain boundary. Okay, so that's a very simple rule for this uh, ball to, to be bounced off about, uh, um, about the boundary, uh, just like uh, when you're playing the snooker or other kind of pinball games. Okay, now it is the main situation. So apart from the four boundaries, I also have some blocks like that. So whenever the ball here meets one of the blocks, it will also be bounced off uh, just like it hits the boundary. So it will be bounced off in the same way. So the goal of this game is to hit these blocks as many times as possible. Let's say maybe I have a lot of balls, like uh, 10 balls in total. Then I want to shoot all these balls along a single direction. And then I want the path of the ball to be nice enough so that they hit the blocks here for many, many times. So this kind of a question is also related to some geometry. For example, if the angle of shooting this ball is uh, very small, for the angle, I mean the angle made by the sixth line and also the vertical line. So you can see the angle here is very small. If you try to throw the ball around this direction, now let's see what happens. Now, so I have 10 balls in total, so all of them will be thrown along the same sixth line. And you can see that uh, they basically just uh, hit the top boundary and then bounce backward uh, without hitting any of the blocks here. So that means this is not the ideal case. I want the ball to hit the blocks instead. So maybe you can say that I can actually increase the angle by a little bit. So this time I try to consider another path like that. So that the angle here becomes larger. Then uh, let's see uh, what happens if I hit the ball along this path. And you can see that uh, whenever the ball hits the blocks, uh, the hit number here it, uh, increases. So in total, uh, there are 140 hits. So I have 10 balls in total, which means that on average, every ball will hit the blocks here for 14 times. Now the reason is that um, 
we call that I put the path in this way. So actually all the balls are actually thrown into this area. So that's how you can recall that um, according to this animation, the balls actually move uh, between these two boundaries. Uh, so whenever they, they hit the boundary or, or the blocks here, I mean, whenever they hit the blocks, uh, the number of hits here will be increased. So this actually increases the number of times that the blocks are hit. So in other words, uh, the correct way to play this game is also related to some kind of uh, study of geometry because you want to change the angle of shooting the ball so as to get the maximum possible hits here. Of course, you may say that in reality, normally you don't really need to compute the correct angle in order to get such a better hit. And you normally just use your experiences when playing a game like that. But I would still say that uh, there are some situations that uh, you can still apply more mathematical knowledge of this kind in order to get a better understanding of a game like that. Maybe I can show you another scenario that also about the same game, but uh, played in a different way. So this time I have four blocks put in these four positions. So once again, I want the ball here to hit all the blocks. Maybe uh, according to this order, I first hit the first block, the second one, the third, and then the fourth one. So one question that you may ask is uh, whether it is possible just to throw the ball along this direction. And then afterwards, it may hit uh, according to this path and then hit the four blocks. But I, in case uh, you, you, you have played this kind of game before or uh, you have some more sense in geometry, you should be able to see that uh, this is actually an impossible path. Yeah, which means that if you re-throw the ball along this direction, then uh, very likely it will not be bounced off according to this path. Now, very likely uh, after hitting the first block here, it will be bounced off according to this direction. So it's actually move away rather than following the ideal path like that. So this is uh, something related to the sense of some geometry. So you may, you may say that uh, whether it's possible to change the path in this way, so maybe uh, rather than throwing it directly to the first block, I first hit it uh, to the left boundary. And then uh, after bouncing it from the left boundary, it go backward and it hits the four blocks one by one. So then I follow this uh, zigzag shape of the path. So this sounds a better solution to this question. Uh, so you may tend to think that uh, this is actually the, the correct answer to solve a question like this. Yeah, so apart from just um, throwing it directly and then test whether this uh, guess is correct or not. Yeah, we can actually use some more mathematical knowledge to justify this or to disprove this. Yeah. So here, uh, before answering this question, let me simplify the situation a bit further. So I want to make some observations about the path of the ball here. So I this time I simplify the blocks so that they are represented by some black segments like that. So there are some vertical segments representing the boundaries. So these uh, red segments denotes the path of the ball. So it starts from here and then hits the different blocks like that. So here are some uh, arguments using some mathematics. According to the law of reflection, you know that uh, these pairs of angles are equal. These two are equal. These two angles are equal. So apart from that, uh, actually we can also show that uh, all these six angles are the same. So you may notice that uh, this is something non-trivial, uh, meaning that uh, it is not guaranteed by a definition, but uh, you can prove this uh, using some mathematical arguments. The reason is that um, these black lines are supposed to be vertical lines, so they are parallel to each other. So in particular, uh, this angle is equal to that angle by the so-called alternate angles of these parallel lines. So in the same way, uh, this angle must be equal to that angle. So that's why uh, all the angles here are basically the same. So based on this uh, observation, we can also see that uh, the other three green angles like that are also the same because uh, each of them is actually a uh, 180 degree minus the two blue angles, the same for the other two. So that's why uh, these three angles are actually the same. So you can use the same arguments to show that uh, these two segments, which are the paths of the ball, are actually parallel to each other. So you can see that the two angles here are the alternate angles of these uh, parallel lines. If they are equal, that means the two segments must be parallel. 
So for the same reason, uh, these two angles are the same, showing that the two segments like that are also parallelized. So in other words, uh, I have actually used some kind of a geometry knowledge to deduce some uh, long obvious uh, results like this, which means that every time when the path of the ball is changed twice, every time when the direction is changed twice, then you can see that uh, the direction that it travels is uh, basically the same because there are some parallel lines. The same for the second segment and also the fourth segment. So that's one property that you can deduce are based on the reflection, based on the property of reflection. So let's go backward and then see the, the same question that I raised earlier. So recall that I want the ball to hit the four blocks in this way. So which means that I want the path of the ball to be like that uh, near the end. So you can actually go backward and then use the observation that we made uh, to see what is the original path of the ball. So that means uh, you can actually extend the path here and then go backward in this way by drawing a line parallel to this segment. So that means uh, if you shoot the ball along this direction, actually it can bounce off uh, by the blocks in this way and then gets to the ideal path. So which means that uh, you should probably uh, start the ball here rather than here. But in case uh, you have to fix the ball in this, um, in this alignment, uh, then maybe you can do one more step. So which means that um, you can actually draw another line parallel to this one like that. So that's, uh, this will be the ideal path of the ball in case uh, you want it to hit the four blocks. So that means uh, perhaps you have to start the ball here in order to play this game. But uh, let's say if the ball uh, is fixed at this position, uh, you, you cannot change the initial position, and that means that uh, you cannot follow exactly this path uh, and then hit the four blocks one by one like that. Now, of course, uh, there, there are some variations of the path here. It doesn't mean that I have to uh, hit the blocks as the midpoint. You may shift the path a little bit upwards or change the angle by a little bit. Yeah, but uh, in general, you can uh, try to use this kind of uh, knowledge about parallel lines to make a guess of the path of the ball. So these are some kind of a knowledge that uh, you can somehow apply in playing a game like that. So personally, I, I like uh, this kind of game very much. And then I, I often uh, try to use this kind of way to make a guess on what is the coming path of the ball. So that's uh, to guess uh, which direction uh, that I should throw the ball so that uh, its path is the, is the best that I want. So this shows you another uh, scenario that uh, you can apply some concepts in maths, but not just about some commutations and some numbers. It's another thing related to geometry. Okay, one more question or one more uh, situation. So this time uh, is about the concept of probability. So also uh, this is one uh, mathematical concept, uh, which is normally uh, studied in high school. But then uh, I still believe uh, most people actually have a rough idea on what probability is, even if they haven't learned this concept before. For example, if you are throwing a fair dice, so there are six phases in total. Normally, uh, we say that's the chance of getting a particular number is one over six. That's the meaning of uh, probability. So you also face uh, many kinds of situations like this when you are playing game, which means uh, whenever they involve some kind of random events, uh, so that means uh, you are not sure whether something must occur or not. You just know the chance that uh, this may happen or not. Then uh, these kind of scenarios are always involve probability. So here I just pick out a very simple example like that, like uh, when you are playing some lucky draw. Uh, so you also have this kind of uh, lucky draw in many games. So the situation is very simple. The chance of getting a prize is just 50% which means you have a probability of one over two to get a price. So a natural question that you want to know or you want to ask is that, how many draws do you need in order to get a price? So let's say I only want to get such a price. So as long as I can get a price, I no longer need to play this game. So how many draws do we need in total in order to get such a price? So if I ask this question, then I also quite believe that uh, many people will just answer two times uh, since the probability is one over two. So you may expect that if I play the lucky draw for two times, then uh, for one time I can actually get a price. For the other draw, I don't get a price. 
So on average, I need uh, two draws in total. But of course, the fact is that uh, you cannot, uh, you can never guarantee that you can get a price because there is always a chance for you that uh, you don't get a price no matter how many times you play the game. Yeah, so that means that if you want to ask the questions, uh, how many draws are needed in order to guarantee that you can get a price? Yeah, the answer is actually uh, that's impossible. Yeah, you can also guarantee that you can always get a price. Yeah, you can only compute the chance that you can get such a price. Of course, uh, there is also a mathematical term about this. Um, uh, we call it the expected value. So that means uh, we still say that the expected number of draws that you need is two times. But the meaning of this is that uh, on average, uh, if you play the game for two times, then there is a um, likely chance that you will get a price. But uh, it is not a must. And also I would say that uh, this expected fellow may seem to be a bit different from the usual understanding from normal people. Normal people may think that uh, if it is the expected fellow, that means I should have a very high chance in getting such a price after two draws. And if not, that means I'm very unlucky. But here I want to show you uh, some more uh, technical stuff uh, by doing more computations here to analyze the thing. So here it requires a little bit more understanding of probability. Yeah. So of course, according to the rule in the first draw, the chance of getting a price is one half. The chance of not getting a price is one half. The same for the second draw. So in order to compute the chance of getting a price in one of the draws here, you do not just add up the chance here. So actually the correct way is to analyze the chance of not getting a price. Because recall that I, I only want to get at least one price. So if I already get a price in the first draw, I don't need the second time. So actually the correct way in handling a question like this is to compute the chance of not getting a price in two draws, which is the product of this uh, one over two and one over two. So that means that there is a chance of one over four of not getting a price in two draws. So accordingly, the chance of getting a price after two lucky draws would be uh, 75%. So actually that's uh, the result. So even though we say that uh, two times is the expected value for you to get a price, it turns out that uh, there is only a chance of 75% for you to get such a price after playing the game for two, two times. So I don't think this is a really large uh, chance. Uh, it's still uh, bigger than one half, but then uh, it's, there's still um, plenty of amounts from the from a really good, uh, I mean, a really high chance. Uh, that means uh, in general, let's say if you have four people uh, doing the same thing here, then uh, on average, according to this number, there is still one of you who cannot get a price after two draws, which means that uh, this unlucky is not uh, too unlucky. Yeah, what I mean is that uh, um, there is still a very quite, quite some chance for you not to get a price after two draws, uh, even though uh, two draws is the so-called expected number of times that you need in order to get a price. So that's something that I want to mention here. Uh, and you can also generalize the, the situation a little bit uh, to see some more examples of the same kind. Uh, that means uh, if you want to see uh, what is the chance of not getting a price after playing this for n times, then in the same way, the answer would be one over two to the power n. So correspondingly, the chance of getting a price after n times would be one minus this quantity. So I denote this uh, probability by P of n. In the following, I list out a table like that uh, and I show you some results as you will get a price after uh, one to five draws. So in one draw, uh, you only have a 50% chance to get a price. Two draws, you have a chance of 75%. The very often, uh, we say that a chance is uh, uh, very high if it is over 95%. So if the chance goes up to 95% or even above, then we say that uh, this event is, uh, would occur in a, in, a, in a very likely way. So it is very likely that the event will occur if the probability is over 95%. So according to this um, understanding, you may see that uh, we actually need five times, uh, five lucky draws in total in order to get this very high chance to get at least one price. This is uh, quite a lot compared to our expected fellow here. 
So the expected value is only two times. But the fact is that we actually need five times to get uh, this chance of getting a price. Okay. Uh, yeah, then, uh, I mean, um, these are somehow related to some kind of um, more technical stuff, which I don't want to mention that. Uh, so because uh, some some audience actually asked me some question privacy. So um, I, here I just want to give you some uh, brief understanding or some uh, rough picture that uh, the usual understanding of the expected value may not really mean something that is expected. Actually, if you really want to get a very high chance that something occurs, the final answer here is actually uh, much larger than what you expect. So I can also further generalize this um, like the following. Hey, I can uh, change the probability here. Now, previously, I say that the chance of getting a price is one over two. And this time in general, uh, you can see that the probability won't be that high. So I let it be P. And I can compute the things in more or less the same way. This is the chance of not getting a price. And then uh, the chance of getting a price after N draws with probability P would be one minus one minus P to the power N. Okay, so you can try to substitute some files of P and N and see more about the situation. For example, if the chance of getting a price is, uh, let's say one over five. So that means uh, for each draw, you have a chance of 20% of getting such a price. And then you may say that uh, the expected value of getting a price would be five times. Then you can see that if I play the game for five times, the chance that I guess the price is only around two thirds. So it's about uh, 67%. And then if you if you play this uh, for 10 times instead, uh, the chance actually go upward to something like 89%. And then if you further increase the chance to, I mean, for the number of uh, um, draws to 13 or 14, you see that uh, finally the probability goes up to about 95%. So you can see that uh, that means uh, the chance in order to get a chance of 95 percent or above in order to win such a price the number of uh, draws that you need is actually much more than the expected value so you can also uh, try to um, see another analog with a even smaller probability i think uh, this fits into the reality much more so usually the chance of getting the top price is only about one percent or even 0 0.1 percent so you can see some figures like this by using the same formula here. In 100 times, which is the expected number of times that you can get a price, actually you only get a chance of about 60% to get such a price. For 200 times, uh, the figure goes up to 86%. And if you want uh, 95%, then you actually uh, need uh, about 300 uh, lucky draws in total. So once again, uh, that's actually much higher than the expected value. So if these figures are, I mean, these figures are just some examples. Uh, you may wonder whether this is uh, always the case. So we can actually analyze this again with some more advanced mathematics. So yeah, here I can also show you some more uh, deeper knowledge in this part in order to um, figure out a certain relation similar to this one. So I further consider a more general case where the probability of getting the price is one over M, where M is a large number. So you may expect that after M draws, which is the expected value, I should get a price. So according to the formula here, the probability of getting this is only the quantity like that. So M is a very large number. So here you may try to use some concept in limits and to compute the approximate value of this quantity. So limits means that when M goes to infinity, this quantity actually tends to a certain steady number. So we call this the limits of a certain expression. Okay, so using some concept in calculus uh, or some kind of a limit, so you can actually compute the limits of this thing. So here I omit the technical stuff. So if you are really interested uh, in this thing and you have the corresponding uh, knowledge and try to compute the limits of that, the answer would be one minus one over D. E. D e is the special number uh, 2.7 something, which uh, you can compute this using your calculator. So the answer here is only about 63%, which agrees with the data that we mentioned earlier. 
So in the same way, uh, if you play this lucky draw for three M times, so you change the power here to three M. Once again, when M is large enough, uh, this actually gives you a quantity like that. So this quantity is um, close to 95%, which also agrees with our observation. That means if you want to get a very high chance of getting such a price, you actually need to play the draw for three M times you know, rather than M times. So that's why uh, if you have this kind of a uh, correct understanding on probability and also for the expected value, then um, you can actually see that um, this uh, value is uh, actually much more than the usual case that uh, you may understand. So in other words, um, you can actually use this kind of knowledge to get a better feeling when you are playing some lucky draws uh, next time. Uh, you don't uh, always complain that you are on an unlucky uh, state because uh, every time uh, there are usually around 30 to 40 percent people who are in the unlucky uh, situation. Okay, so that's something uh, you can actually deduce using some more mathematics. Okay, finally, I, I also want to say a bit more about uh, the game theory. Uh, so this part is not too related to our talk today, even though uh, it's still called a game. But uh, this is more closely related to mathematics. The game theory is uh, one branch of mathematics, just like the other thing like algebra, geometry, or some calculus. So it is also a branch of mathematics that is studied by some kind of mathematicians. But of course, um, uh, the, the original uh, kind of a classical um, games that are studied by the game theory is uh, the combinatorial game theory. For example, you study different kind of games played between two players. So you want to figure out what is the strategy in playing such a game. That means that uh, you want to find out the winning strategy, or as this a strategy for you uh, lost to uh, loss in the game, uh, lost to lose in the game. So some uh, classical examples are this thing. Uh, you know, in the tic tac toe, um, there there are always a strategy that allows you not to lose the game. Yeah. So even though you cannot guarantee a win, you, you, you will never lose according to that strategy. Yeah. So there are some more complicated situations like the chess or the goal, etc. So we, all, we still know that uh, there should be some kind of strategy which exists, but uh, to find such a strategy is a much more complicated question. Maybe we also need to use some more technology uh, like the artificial intelligence to help. Okay, so rather than that, uh, I mean, apart from this, uh, there are also some kind of games that is studied uh, inside the branch of game theory. Uh, another classical kind of game is the zero sum game. So it's a kind of game that's the total benefits of all the players add up to zero. For example, if you, have, you only have uh, two players, that means the gain of one player is uh, equal to the loss of the other player. So in general, I uh, like some examples of pokers or bridge. Uh, so you can see that uh, there are some ways for you to define the scores of the players. Then the total scores of all the players will always be zero. Uh, so those are some kind of zero sum game. I think uh, this terminology is also a uh, commonly seen terminology. So, but uh, this is not uh, what uh, game theory is really about. Of course, uh, they are part of the game theory, but I would say that uh, most, most mathematicians in this area won't uh, spend their time in studying a certain game. They don't just uh, find out the strategy in playing a certain kind of game that is uh, for fun. Uh, usually we try to establish some kind of theories. So as his name suggests, uh, we try to deduce some results of theorems so that uh, they can be applied to more kind of games or many kinds of situations, yeah, not just about playing games. Yeah, for example, here I just uh, pick out some uh, randomly uh, random theorem uh, from this branch, which is also a very well-known result called the uh, Zermano's theorem. So it says that uh, under some kind of situation, uh, some kind of conditions here, like you're having a two-person games, a zero-sum game, you have some finite game, yeah, which means a game so that it can always end. And then uh, the two players have some perfect information. Yeah, you know what the other players are doing, and then you know all the rules of the games. Then under all these conditions, you can show that uh, one of the players must have a winning strategy of the game. So these are the usual uh, kind of uh, things that you see in some uh, mathematical topics. Uh, just like in this topic, uh, we usually establish some theorems like that. So it doesn't really mean that it provides a winning strategy for us in order to play the goal or the chess, etc. But uh, it only tells us the existence of such a winning strategy. 
So that's more about the, the advanced thing in this uh, game theory. And as you can also see, uh, as the beginning, I say that uh, here is the study of decision making. So that means the whole branch here is not really about uh, playing games. Yeah, in, when you're playing some games, of course, you need to make a lot of decisions. But in general, there are also many situations that uh, you can make some decisions, yeah, not just about playing games. So there, are, there is a wide range of applications of this branch of mathematics. So here, I just randomly miss out some of them, uh, like uh, economics, uh, political science, or biology. Uh, so even though some of these topics may seem to be very far away from mathematics, but you can expect that uh, there are also many situations in those branches that uh, you need to apply some kind of decision making. So whenever you need to make some decisions, uh, even in daily life or other situations, then uh, you can actually apply some kind of results in game theory for you to solve these kind of questions. So that's uh, more about the, the real meaning of game theory or the, the things that are studied by some mathematicians in this area, yeah, rather than just uh, playing some kind of games uh, just for fun. Okay, so I think that that's more or less the thing that I want to mention in this talk. Uh, basically, I just want to give you some uh, brief ideas on how mathematics can be applied in many situations. So even for some really basic knowledge in mathematics, uh, like some uh, understanding of numbers, probability, or some geometry, it can still be helpful in working on some uh, daily life questions, uh, even including some entertainments like playing the games. Okay, so I think uh, that's what I want to talk today. Thank you very much. Okay, so then uh, I think in for the remain part, uh, we, we may also have a brief uh, Q&A section in case you really want to ask some questions. So in this all night part, I think it's maybe easier if you can type your question on the chat function. Actually, I already see uh, one or two questions uh, raised by some audience. Maybe I can try to read more about this. Okay, one of you asked uh, how the game theory can be applied in some biology. Now, first of all, I can I have to say that I'm not an expert of this. Uh, actually, I only have a very brief understanding on this uh, topic of game theory. So I, I only search for some related things uh, online and then I try to say something in this talk. So I, I cannot give you some uh, really technical stuff about uh, how, how to apply this uh, in some uh, special kind of uh, branches here. But maybe I can say that um, in biology, let's say uh, you can talk about some competitions of uh, different species. Uh, that means uh, different animals. Uh, every day, um, they, the different animals may need to make a lot of decisions. Uh, for example, they may need to compete for some food, uh, compete for some places for them to live. So all these kind of things are actually related to some kind of uh, decisions. So maybe uh, we can try to apply some results in game theory so as to make a prediction on the, this kind of competitions. So we can make a guess on how this kind of species will interact with each other. And then we may have a guess on what is the population of different kinds of animals in the future. So I think this kind of uh, things can actually be used to apply in this way. So that's why a biology may also be involved, even though it seems to be very far away from mathematics. Hey, another audience asks uh, whether you can uh, create a certain machine that stores all the paths in a certain chess game. Of course, uh, this is uh, theoretically possible in case the game actually uh, consists of a finite number of moves. Uh, so if uh, it's, there is only a finite number of possibilities, then uh, we can always store everything, assuming that uh, we have such a powerful machine. Uh, I quite believe that the uh, technology is actually uh, improved in this way so that uh, we are actually getting a stronger and stronger machine so that uh, eventually we are able to solve uh, more and more uh, questions like that. Uh, that means we are able to find out the winning strategy of more and more games. But of course, uh, when, when the technology increases, uh, someone may also invent some more new games so that it is even harder to play. Uh, so eventually, there is still uh, always some kind of games that cannot be uh, solved in this way.
Well, about the, the question related to the process time, and I, I don't think uh, we can actually judge this uh, based on the limiting information here. Of course, uh, it all depends on uh, which kind of game you are talking about and then uh, what is the situation and the rules. And so for different uh, cases, uh, you actually need to, um, you need to put those information together to, to analyze it further. Uh, so there is no uh, very neat results that uh, tells you the, the usual case. So it depends on the situation. For some for some less important question, I just uh, reply using the private chat yeah, because there seems to be so many questions. Okay, how, how successful has a uh, game theory applied to stock market? Uh, so I also believe that uh, actually economics is uh, one major uh, kind of applications of game theory. Actually, I know uh, actually many, many people who actually use game theory are also involved in economics as well. Uh, so therefore I quite believe that there are actually many applications of that. But uh, once again, I'm not an expert of that. I cannot uh, tell you too much about the, the, how, how this thing can be applied there. So if you are really interested, you can try to study this further. So even though the, the name game theory sounds something uh, which, which looks simple, actually it also involves a lot of advanced mathematics. So even as university, this is a course which is uh, not a basic course. Uh, you actually need to study some more advanced things in order to take the course game theory. Uh, so that's why uh, there are actually many uh, technical stuff uh, in between. But I do believe uh, there are actually many applications of these kind of things. Yeah, some of us uh, with different uh, math rules affects the running speed of programming. So certainly this is the case. And this is uh, one thing that uh, we, we want to uh, figure out in theories like that. That means uh, we want to figure out the, a better way for us to uh, reduce the time in computing all these things. Of course, you may expect that um, you can always ask the computer to compute something in, if you want to find out the certain strategy. But uh, of course, the limitation is that the computer also takes time to run. Uh, so you can also guarantee that uh, the, the, the time is uh, short enough so that uh, you can get the answer with a reasonable time limit. So that's why uh, we also need to um, invent some more uh, new new things uh, so as to um, compute those things in a better way. And of course, uh, this is not just about mathematics. This is also related to some kind of computer science. So those kind of professionals, people will know how to simplify the job in order to do it in a better way.
Yeah, some some asked about um the something related to the uh, maybe that that's the, the last question that I answered because um it's already time uh, then I may not be able to answer all questions here. Uh, so one of you asked uh, about something related to some influence game and also the political world. And of course, uh, there, there's an, another kind of situations that um you you can actually apply some results in game theory to study those kind of things. Yeah, I also list out here that uh, you can. There, are, of course, there are many kind of uh, decisions that is involved in the uh, um, political science. Uh, so, um, of course, uh, ma uh, many games uh, in general are actually some influence game, which means that um, it cannot come to an end. Uh, it may not be able to come to an end. Uh, so, those kind of games are usually uh, much harder to analyze because there are too many possibilities. Uh, so that's why, uh, in general, you 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 also need to. Um, uh, figure out um, a better way for you to solve those kind of questions. Yeah, so without further information, I don't, uh, I can also comment too much on these kind of things. Uh, just to give you a rough picture on these kind of things. Okay, so I'm recommended that uh, I should actually end the lecture here because uh, it's already time. So in case uh, you really need, want to know more about the, the topics today or other kind of things, um, you, you are welcome to send me some email and then ask for the related things. I think it can also be found uh, on the online website in our departments and also in the Faculty of Science. Okay, so thank you for everyone enjoying this uh, lecture. So hope that uh, everyone is doing well. Bye-bye.